there everyone in this video I'm going to show you how to make this infinity scarf it is really thick thick and very warm so it's good for the winter months um, I've made it in um, I think it's called brioche stitch brioche stitch I don't really know how to pronounce it but it looks very similar to rib but um, it's not it's not ribbon it's it's actually very nice it's quite nice to knit as well so um, not much to it I made mine folded over it's 35 inches so that's what 70 inches long if you don't want yours that long you can make it shorter make it longer however you want to um, but yeah I think that's basically it so yeah let's get started. all right so what I want to do is to show you how to do this brioche stitch I'm not sure how you actually pronounce it I say brioche but um, it's a very nice stitch and I make this is the infinity scarf or you if you don't want to make it infinity you can just make it um, straight up and down but this is the stitch now if you make a mistake you are going to see it unfortunately it's one of those you want to be pretty careful that you don't make a mistake because you will see it but it's pretty thick um, it's a nice stretchy very stretchy kind of um, fabric that it makes and it looks similar to rib but it's not it's actually very different and the yarn that I'm using is very thick so it um, it makes it really nice warm scarf now I'm using this hometown USA and it is a six ply so it's super bulky it's really thick um, they say to use a size um, a needle a size 13 which is a nine millimeter but I'm going a lot bigger I'm using a size 17 a US 17 um, I just wanted to make sure that mine is pretty f loose I didn't want it tight so mine's loose and stretchy so I've accomplished that with my size um, I'm not sure how many balls of yarn I'm using because I haven't finished this yet but um, you're probably best to buy three of these and just to be sure that you have enough but um, yeah that's basically it it's a very easy stitch as long as you can knit you'll be able to do this it's not hard and I cast on 16 stitches so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do All this right, now. so I've got my 16 stitches on which I have cast on and um, whichever method you want to cast your stitches on it's it doesn't matter which method you use um, now what you're going to do, so I've got 16, now the very first stitch is just slipped on. Now all the stitches that you slip on, you're slipping on purl wise. So be careful, you've got to keep your yarn over here. And then the very next one you're going to knit. So your yarn is going to come over like that and you're going to get two stitches. That's what you want then you're going to put your yarn as if you're going to purl and you're going to slip this one purl wise and then you're going to knit the next one leave your yarn where it is knit the next one and you've created two stitches and those two stitches you're going to knit off on the next row so you're going to this is what your brio stitch is going to look like you're going to have one that's just slipped and two like this the whole way so now you're going to Put it in the pull position slip this one pull wise and then knit the next with your yarn in that strange position that's what you do and always remember pull bring your yarn as if you're going to pull and don't actually pull the stitch just slip it off and sometimes as I'm going fast I tend to forget and I try and pull it so be careful because I did make a mistake earlier yarn forward as if we're going to pull slip this off and knit the next one that's all that you're going to do for this round this row slip it off and knit yarn as if you're going to pull slip it off pull wise and knit the next one and this is the essence of what you do so now we're going to turn around and you're going to do exactly the same thing the very first one you just slip off slip that first one off now you're going to knit these two so both of these that's actually just one stitch it's considered one stitch even though you have two yarn as if you're going to pull slip this one off and then you're going to knit these two 
Okay, so we knitted two together, then your yarn comes as if you're going to pull and you're just going to slip the next stitch and then knit these two. Yarn as if you're going to pull, slip this one and then the next two you just knit both of them together with your yarn from this side. So you're creating another stitch like the one you've just done. And this is all that you do. So you just keep doing this each row. So yarn forward as if you're going to pull, I mean back, whichever way it is. Knit the next two. Yarn there, slip one pull wise and then knit this. And then bring this over. So that is your stitch that we're going to be using. And you should always end up, you should end up the same way with knitting these two. So that you pull you don't pull, but you slip it off pull wise. Your first stitch you're going to always slip off pull wise. And then knit these two. So that's what gives you this very pretty fabric over here. That's what gives us this nice, that's what gives us this nice stretchy fabric and it's really soft in this yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing mine. Um, go ahead and go as long as you like. Um, I'm not sure what length I want to do mine yet, but um, I will let you know. And um, yeah, so go ahead, do that, and I will meet you once I've got the length that I want. All right, so I just thought I'd show you that if you're introducing your other ball of yarn, how to do it with this stitch, it's pretty tricky because you're not having a, a set stitch in the sense of when you're just knitting. So. What you're going to do is take your new yarn and you want it to be on the opposite side. So I've done it where I've got my slip stitch on and I'm going to be knitting two. So that's probably the best place. You might find a better place, but I thought I'd just show you what I'm doing. Now I'm going to put my yarn, this is the other, the end part of it, and I'm going to have it on this side and I'm going to bring my yarn forward like it should be. I'm going to have it over here. And then I'm going to just knit. Now you've got to kind of just hold it there because it's going to be loose. So you're going to knit your stitch like you would. You will knit that stitch. I don't want to do it because I'm, I don't want to mess my work up. But you would just knit it like that. And then that's where your yarn is. And then when you come back and that, you just got to keep pulling it a bit. And when you start doing the rest of your stitches, it will fall in pretty well. Um, it will slot in well. you just got to be aware of it when you're sewing it. So yes. A place where I did mine and you can see here I mean it was very loose initially but now I just have to sew it in so just do it that way it's probably the best you know just have it on the on this side make sure the end part is on that side bring this one over and just start like norm finish with your start knitting with these two so anyway I thought I would just show you that now I've made my scarf to be it's probably 70 inches which makes it 35 once it's folded over so um, if you want yours to be shorter or longer that's also great I mean it doesn't matter it's really preference as to what you want but I want to show you how you're going to just bind off or end off cast off whatever you want to call it so I'm just going to go to the end of my row and then I'm going to show you what to do and then we're just going to fold our scarf over and sew it together on the two ends so, all right, so now we're going to bind off, and it's your normal bind okay, so I'm just going to knit the first stitch, and I'm going to knit these two together, and then I'm going to pull this stitch over that one. So I'm going to knit this one, and pull the next stitch over. And that's all that you're going to do. Knit the two together, and pull this one over. Knit, the, knit that one. So when it's one, you knit the one. When it's the two, you knit the two. So now I'm going to knit these two and pull that over. And you just keep doing that. And you're just going to have an end like this. Do it fairly loosely because the rest of your stitch is pretty loose. So you don't want to go too tight versus the rest of the garment that's loose. So yeah, do that and then I'm going to show you what to do next. Alright, so with the sewing, this is not my favorite part simply because I feel like you're messing up the stitches um, I just to put my yarn on I did show I've shown this before in one of my other videos but just take your yarn and fold it over 
like that. Make it as tight as you can and then you just push it through your needle. But anyway, now make sure, one of the tips, make sure you're doing all of your sewing on the one side. So that would be the wrong side. So I'm just making sure that I'm doing that and um, okay, that's in the wrong place. Okay, so I'm bringing these through to the other side. I need it this side because this is my wrong side. Now, the, you know, there is no set rule what to do, but the few thing, tips I can give you to try and keep your your stitches all right. You see, this is so um, fluffy and soft that you kind of distort your stitches when, when you're sewing this because the yarn is so thick too. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to go through these like middle ones. I'm just going through that and through this. And as I say, make sure that you just have one side and you don't want to pull on your yarn too much. Now I can see there's a little bit of a gap there, so I'm going to use my other one to fix that up there. But basically, if you can kind of go through your middle ones and just pull it to the tension of this. Now when you wash it, I'm not sure what's going to happen to those threads. I've washed my other one and they were fine, so odds are this will be okay. So just do it like that and you won't see it too much. And then what I do is I go up one way and then I'm going to come back down. So now I'm going to come back down just to be sure. And I'm just really catching these and you're not going to see it on the back. See this side is fine. I'm just trying to keep it on this side. That's why I say just find, keep one side as the back and then you should be alright. So yeah, that's all that you do to sew it. So I'm going to just get finished with my sewing. And then when you're done with that, just cut this off as close to the... So I just, I get a bit paranoid and I do 500 sewings. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to cut it right over there. And it should be okay. Now this one I need to bring through. And yeah, so just sew yours and then we're going to sew, fold it over and sew the top. So I'm going to just sew this and then I'll join you again and finish this scarf. Right, so I'm, I'm trying to show you this um, so you can actually see. Excuse all the stuff on the camera's legs here, but it's the only way that I can do this. Now, you're going to take your long scarf and you're going to fold it in half. So it's like this. Fold it in half and make sure that you've got your right sides together because remember you want to keep the grotty side on the inside. And so make sure that you've got two right sides facing and then you're going to just join these two ends together. So I'm going to bring you in closer and show you how to do that. Okay, so you can see where I've sewn mine in on this side. It doesn't look the best but, you know, it's one of those things and um, yeah, it's on the inside so it's not bad. Now we're going to take one of these threads, yarns, and now it depends on how you want to sew yours. Um, you know, the, as I said, there's no right or wrong way. So I think I'm going to just use my longest thread here and I'm going to sew this together. And you can sew it however you like, whichever way you prefer it. And I'm going to turn mine around. Okay, so. I'm just going to take one from each side. Now I don't want any ridge, so I'm going to just take this end one. Alright, so my ending here was a little bit funny. My thread was all the way here, so I'm just going to come through this loop and come in here. As I say, there is no set rule here. You just have to work with yours and get it sewn together. But yeah, I'm just going to take these two and just go in here. And there's no, you know, just get them sewn together. Just make sure that they are equal, your two sides, that you're not sewing one side more than the other, because else it's going to end up uneven. And you can keep looking to see what it looks like on that side. As long as it's looking all right, then you'll be fine. So yeah, just sew these two together. And that will be the end of your scarf. So I'm... Um, Thank you for joining me in this making of this scarf and I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks so much. Bye.